React, Angular, Vue, HTML. While these frameworks give us a lot of power and capability, we don't often tend to sit, sit back and figure out what is the cost. React, Angular, and Vue are common JavaScript frameworks that make developing complex applications a little more straightforward. However, we are left with a lot of complex JavaScript at the end of the day. What if we went back to the basics, HTML first? With common web frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue, we don't often step back to take time to figure out whether are these frameworks really needed for our project? And it turns out there's many situations that make a lot of sense to just leverage HTML as the first starting point, and even going so far as to maintaining that first HTML first design principle. So we're checking out this htmlfirst.com. It's a set of principles that aims to make building web software easier, faster, and inclusive, and also more maintainable. The one I really like that often goes unnoticed is faster. It's so much faster. You don't realize any of these web frameworks have a significant amount of overhead that slows your browser down and the whole world is costing so much energy and compute just to have to deal with these frameworks, all these end users burning their CPUs. Let's take a quick look here at the principles leveraging the default capabilities of modern web browsers. Basically, most web browsers these days come built in with really fast and performant capabilities that we used to rely on the frameworks for, but are now baked into web browsers and they are very fast and capable. Leveraging the extreme simplicity of HTML's attribute syntax. So when we're building HTML here, I see that, for example, an attribute is on click equals this thing here. You can also provide your own attributes, own custom attributes, and the browser also specifically looks for ones like this attributes that on click, for example, the browser will take notice. And that's all built into the browser. And then number three is leveraging the web's view source affordance. What, what is, what is, <laughs> wait, hold on. All right, this is a concept that I've heard about but never realized there was a term for it. View source affordance is a critical feature of the web that allows people to copy, modify, and customize and improve source code. So for example, I can view source. Let's try out that view source here on this page just to see. So we click view developer and then view source. And this gives us a clear picture of what's going on underneath the, the application, the hood here, for example. And it's kind of great to see that, you know, this htmlfirst.com website is, <laughs> is taking advantage of the principles that it's describing. A lot of HTML in here. Even though we really like to dive into these React and Angular and other kinds of web frameworks, the HTML first approach comes with so much more that we're just leaving on the table. By going HTML first, that you open up a whole new world of a pool of people who can work on web software and code bases. Really the key here is about simplicity, maintainability, and the ability to expand, extend, and go further while staying in an HTML first type type development pattern. Because of this simplicity, we open up the ability of uh, different folks who can work on these code bases. Because if you take a look at what is required for something like a React, there is a large volume of knowledge and documentation and a whole bunch more things that really set the bar that much higher. And at the end of the day, you might not necessarily have something that is actually that much better. This is the main goal. The primary goal of HTML first is to provide a much larger opportunity pool for web development. As we're talking more about goals and advantages of HTML first philosophy and principles, we see there's a lot of opportunity on the table for us to take advantage of this principle. Taking a look here, there's a second goal of HTML first to make it more enjoyable and seamless to build web software. Web programming in general is very UI heavy, right? So we have a, a picture in front of us and we can paint buttons and experiences for users who are gonna interact with our software. It's really exciting to see that product come together rapidly as we transition from just the text in an editor into what the browser renders. And the problem with existing frameworks is that it takes several years of mastering tools and frameworks to get to that stage. That's a huge barrier to entry. And with the HTML first principles, we should be able to allow people to unlock that feeling sooner. They also have a new level of mastery that they get much earlier than 
in a coding journey with a framework like React and Angular and Vue. HTML first is a set of principles that we're gonna walk through here. So that way you can leverage the most advantage from HTML first principles. Let's take a look here. We see here on the screen, we have a nice set of bullet lists. And just walking through it, we uh, prefer vanilla approaches, use HTML attributes for styling and behavior, which some of you might think is an anti-pattern, but it brings with it this excellent world of simplicity. I love it, it's fantastic. And so next we're using libraries that leverage HTML attributes. So that will immediately start excluding a lot of uh, different frameworks and libraries. Avoid any build steps. Now I could see why that's critical because if you're building with HTML and you're writing code and you wanna see it represented in the browser immediately, if there's a build phase, it's very likely that now you've added a huge amount of complexity and that really puts a hamper on those who might be able to jump into the project and be successful early on. And then prefer naked HTML. I don't know what that means. We'll figure it out here in a second. And be view source friendly. So when you click on the view, developer view source, you can see that everything is clear and easy to understand. With HTML first, using it as a foundation for our new philosophies and principles to make the world better. We'll walk through here the various principles and starting with vanilla approaches to achieve desired functionality over external frameworks Works. Hey, they even provide some examples. So, all right, so out of the box, browsers support a lot of capabilities. Most of these frameworks that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis, it's just duplicate code at that point. It's re-implemented browser functionality. Browsers come baked in with their own framework. We don't necessarily need to be leveraging external frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue. And there's a fantastic example. Look at this. All right, so clean, simple HTML looks ordinary, I can understand what's going on here pretty easily. Even if I didn't really know know what HTML was, I kind of get the picture. But when we look at this, what's going on? What are all these things? <laughs> what is it? Export default details component. What is going on here? Now, obviously this is a simplified example and this is a scenario that you would definitely not necessarily need a React for anyway. It's just showing you, for instance, the amount of code and the differences that you need to be able to express the functionality that you're looking to implement in a browser is so much more simple with HTML first. As we're going back to the basics and actually intending to stay there, HTML first is a really powerful set of principles that will guide us into making sure that we maintain simple code bases for our web applications. The next principle here on the list is to use HTML attributes for styling and behavior using the inline attributes. So this is great. What this does is allows us to take advantage of libraries such as Tailwind or Tachyons in a more static nature where we don't have to worry about a building phase. For example, here is a one-liner for Tailwind that allows us to leverage the majority of the benefit of the Tailwind, for example, which is a series of predefined and pre-built UI classes for CSS. And we can see here, there's a nice little example of us modifying in our HTML directly to change and manipulate the UI to match the exact needs of our application. I mean, like, I like out there. This is great. This is a much easier, more streamlined development experience. It's all baked in and you get exactly what you're looking for. And it's all very simple and reusable and copy pasteable. Tailwind is actually pretty cool, isn't it? Now, while it does say that we could use extra JavaScript libraries like HypeScript or Alpine, I do feel like that is taking it a little bit extra over the step of simplicity because the browser already has a lot of those baked in capabilities. If we're already defining attributes in our HTML, browsers these days already have baked in methods like a query selector that allows you to query as exactly you would with CSS. You'd be able to target a specific set of divs or elements on a page. You'd be able to target a series across all of the pages using just one simple JavaScript selector, one line built in, no extra code needed from an external library. Here's a quick example of what they're describing. You have a simple button here with click me and then you have the code kind of baked in right here, I can see, straightforward and simple. And then they're discouraging having decoupled files with a whole bunch of different things here. So we can see we have HTML decoupled from the style, decoupled from the functionality. And what they're encouraging is everything all in one spot. And it does look like <laughs> I'm looking at right now, that looks a lot more simple, doesn't it? And yes, it does. They even admit here that it does violate the idea of separation of concerns where you're decoupling the data layer from the visualization, from the functionality, which are nice ways to carp and follow those principles in general. I'm this just looking at this right here in front of me. 
this looks a lot better. <laughs> it is all in one file and it's a lot simpler. And I can see how they say this is, you know, a little more, everyone can jump in. Uh, almost anyone can deal with something like that. HTML first is looking pretty good. Let's find opportunities to see ways to simplify overall web application development. And with HTML first, we have this nice set of principles that we're gonna walk through and we're currently on use libraries that leverage HTML attributes. And they immediately jump into an example here where they show us we have maybe like a JavaScript library that we're importing and then the rest is just all HTML. And it looks like we're doing a little bit of domain specific development here with some ideas, I guess some plain language, right? And they compare it to this over here where we do have some decoupled and implemented JavaScript script directly on the page. Actually, it doesn't matter where it is. It, the idea is here. I, I actually kind of like this a lot. Let's find ways. The idea is to see, let's find ways where we don't have to implement any JavaScript. Let's just stick with HTML as much as possible. And I really like this because not only is this less code overall, it's also simple because I don't see any JavaScript here. And if you look at this and there, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Obviously we could simplify this a bit, though the main takeaway is there's no job, it's all HTML. It's it's easy and we're just using attributes and uh, underscore attribute. <laughs> it is interesting. I do see that it is overall, this is a lot easier and more accessible. I can see maintaining this is a lot more happy making than trying to maintain something like this. Let's not bother with those React, Angular, and Vue JavaScript frameworks if we have something like a back to the way things were, HTML first philosophies and principles. We're gonna find a much better overall product that we develop and deliver. Additionally, we can maintain that product a lot more seamlessly. We are currently looking at the principles and we're on the third to the last here, avoid build steps. Steer clear of build steps. Now I can just see that it's, if you add in a build layer into your application, you're gonna find that you've immediately increased the level of complexity that you've added into your overall application architecture. This adds burdens, even though it might seem like it's always oh, a good idea. Overall, you're adding in dependencies and maintenance. These things will cause potential breakages in the future. Also, this significantly, if not entirely, impairs the view source affordance, which we learned a little bit early here that this is the ability for anyone on the web to be able to copy, modify, and customize source code that they find here by, cl you know, clicking the view source, right? So just, you know, going to view developer view source. This is a lot easier to copy directly and you can also make improvements a lot more easily. And the great thing is we can go even a step further by leveraging static tailwind, for example, or HTMX that allows us to significantly reduce any needing to write additional code beyond HTML. We can leverage just Tailwind CSS directly and stay in HTML land, which is a, a lot better developer experience. And now your maintenance is that much lower because all you're doing is maintaining HTML. Doesn't that sound a lot better? Not needing to even worry about JavaScript. That sounds a very much pleasant experience. Here, they give us some examples. They say, here you go, check this out. Let's, if we are using CSS and we are gonna be maintaining it, just here's, here's a styles.css, no build, no anything like that. And then they're discouraging any built data or or anything that you need to run on your system. Oh, that's another thing, that's another thing. If you do have a build stage, that means you need to have these build tools installed on your system, which is an extra level of maintenance because these tools, they change over time. Their versions increment, things break, things get upgraded. If we can avoid this, we don't even have to worry about it. HTML first is we're gonna make the world a better place. We are making things better for web developers everywhere by taking this philosophy and making it our own. We're walking through all the different things that makes HTML first a really good idea. And we're on the second to the last part here of the principles. Prefer naked HTML. I don't, what's, what is it? I, I, I can kind of guess what that means. Let's check this out really quick. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, okay, so just use basic HTML as opposed to any obfuscation layers or domain specific languages like maybe Markdown, for example. I wonder if they mentioned Markdown in here. Okay, the idea is that they want us to be able to hold a single file with HTML in it, and that is a basically a static file. There's no rendering, there's no variables. It's just super simple. The ultimate underlying idea again here is readability. If a developer who is familiar with HTML, but not the backend framework looks through the view files, they should still be able to understand most of it, if not all of it. 
All right, they do give us an example here. This goes a step against of where the overall philosophy, I would say, we're now looking at the usage of HTML, which is a rendered HTML that does impact the simplicity. But taking a look at what they're discouraging here is a lot more generated HTML through server rendering. Now we can see this does look, a, it is more detailed. There's more stuff here. It's not as simple. You might think, oh, but it's reusable. <laughs> But look at the difference. This is a lot easier to understand. The simplicity is just worth that much more. The value of this example is 10 times higher than the value of this example. You might feel like, oh, but no, I spent all this time abstracting it. Now we can read, no. Someone else might eventually have to come in and look at this and they're like, what's going on here? You need to have an additional level of understanding in order to leverage any of this versus this is a little bit more streamlined and simple. Just as a matter of comparison, right? Rendered HTML or, you know, basic, basic variable interpolation. HTML first is a powerful design principle, set of design principles that will dramatically simplify our lives as web developers. Not only does it bring faster and easier and more inclusive and maintainable code. Oh wait, why, why should there be more than that? That, that sounds great to me. <laughs> I really like that. We're looking at the principles here and we're at the very last one, be view source friendly. It says where possible, maintain the right click view source affordance. And this view source affordance term I was less familiar with until Google told me about it. Basically we can view source on the page and everything is right there. We can see it and if we want, we can copy it, we can paste it, we can modify it. And that is so much more powerful when we're doing that with just vanilla HTML. Some of the things that we lost with the early web is that it's possible to peek behind the curtains and look at the code responsible for what's rendering the web page. The web is supposed to be open. Everyone can see what's going on. They can tell what is underneath the covers. And if we use things like React, which is the most popular framework on the web. We can't do things like view source and copy the code. It becomes a challenge to remix. We can't remix it. React has build steps, which is we learned earlier, adds the additional layer of complexity to our application. And all React code snippets must be wrapped in the React application framework in order for it to even work in the first place, which brings a big, nice chunk of JavaScript that we have to ship with all of our web applications and it gets very slow, like a lot slower. It drains a lot of energy actually. If we're really thinking about it and we're looking at, you know, making the world a better place, we can reduce the overall level of compute required by the devices and the energy drain by using HTML first principles. And as a good part, from any business or product perspective, the user experience is a hundred times better because it's instantaneous. There's no huge heavy lift JavaScript interpolation that's required to render or interact with the page, which allows the browser to work at its full peak efficiency. And if you've tried it before, web applications built with HTML exclusively and mostly as a vanilla UI experience, it's instantaneous compared to anything that requires a web framework. In general, my takeaway is that I love simplicity and in that brings power, maintainability, and performance, especially in this case for HTML and web app development. I do kind of see the other side of the coin here where we might be a React or Angular or Vue web application developer using those frameworks seem to bring a high level of abstraction, which might feel like it's making our development lives easier, but it's really not in many cases because there's extra code that we have to put in all these different spots and it just overall in balloons the level of complexity of the application. And it also significantly reduces anyone else coming in to be able to manage and maintain that going forward. And we've created a new barrier of entry for those who are interested in jumping in to become web application developers.